Oh, hello. Welcome, everybody, to the Biotopes. So as you can see, I'm not in the Biotopes right now. Today we're in Josh Cook's fish room. Josh is the president of the Lorraine County Aquarium Society, and uh, he's got a really cool fish room, and uh, I'm really excited to share this with you all, so get comfortable and stay tuned. Hi, Josh. So why don't you take us around the room? What's this first tank got for us here? This is a 30-gallon extra tall. Yeah. This is like one of my favorite tanks in the size. Um, but inside here, Skiffia Multipunctata. Uh, I forget the collection point without pulling it out right now. But these guys are really cool. They're uh, one of those endangered Gadeets uh, that I keep a lot of. Um, they're just starting to really colony breed. The males you'll see, there's a, this is a big male here. He's getting a little bit of yellow belly yep. with the black spots. This collection point just gets faint. That's considered faint black spots. Like this guy here, this is another male faint black spots. I have another collection we'll see in a minute and half their body will be completely covered in black wow. with the yellow and it's just a different color. It's the same fish, same species, just a different collection point but for some reason evolutionary wise they've, they've uh, needed to get a darker spot for, for identification but you'll see lots of live plants in all my tanks. This is a bulbitis, dwarf sag, dwarf uh, water lettuce which I think is really important to these guys uh, colony spotting because you'll see in in a lot of them little tiny fry swimming around here and there but they're fun they're one of my fun fish yeah bulbitis that's a plant that hard to find <laughs> yeah. you know yeah um, everybody you'll see a lot I, I i don't i do kind of have an idea so long story short five years ago i put an order in at dustin's fish tanks and i ordered three bulbitis plants didn't get them for Three or four weeks, I emailed him and said, hey, I ordered. <laughs> and, uh, and he emailed me back. He's like, I'm sorry, all I have is rhizomes. He sent me four rhizomes. Uh, and uh, the, from those four rhizomes, you will see every single bulbitis in wow. this fish room. And that was five years ago. Unreal. Um, so this is, this is, believe it or not, there's two of them in here. These are considered kind of small. I don't know if you can see. Yeah. No, that's, here's my hand. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a, and that's a six, seven inch plant. Yeah. Yeah, these are considered small in the fish room. So. Now, um, since we're with the biotopes, talk to us a little bit about where in the world are yeah. these live bears from exactly? Lock, so these are the Gadeids are found in the central western part of Mexico. Okay. Um, Gadeid is a type of live bear that is actually uh, uh, viviparous. Uh, viviparous means that uh, like a human, uh, they have are born with an umbilical cord. When you think of a guppy, mm -hmm. uh, those are oviparous. Uh, a guppy, when they breed, the everything for that fry is inside the egg sac inside the mother's womb. Gotcha. But uh, gadeids uh, are a hundred percent reliant on the health of the mother. Uh, they get all their nutrients and oxygen supply from the umbilical, umbilical cord, but it's actually called a trophitania or trochitania is the actual technical name of it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's one of the reasons. Also, the guppy might give birth to 40, 50, 60 fry. Uh, these guys are, are considered prolific, and you'll get 15 to 20 fry from them. You'll see some species in here. I might get two. Gotcha. Two. So they're all pretty much considered endangered. They're all considered uh, needing help. And mm -hmm. because they're not a pretty super awesome fish, not very few zoos or institutions really touch them. So it's really, you know, it's uh, it's one of those things where I get to itch the, the yeah. aquarium and the conservation boat at the same well, time. Well, this is why I think it's so important for us to see this room because you've got some great species that you just don't see that often. Yeah, a lot of and them. And many of them endangered. Yes. Right. So, so critically endangered. There's one behind you that is extinct in the wild, um, and I know of maybe seven people in the United States that have. Them. Can't wait. So awesome. Cool. Thirty tall. Nice. Yeah, it's a sweet tank. So this is a 65. Uh, sorry about the glass. Heavily planted. Uh, this is really set up for the Allophorus robustus, which is these seven looking dudes right here. They're another type of gadeid. Besides the gadeid atropinus. Uh, they are considered one of the larger ones. These are still considered fry. 
Mm. Now, you know, they're about going a little over two inches. Yeah. They'll be almost the size of my hand when they're fully uh, uh, grown. Wow. Uh, but this tank is really heavily planted for them. Uh, they prefer it to be as heavily planted as possible. So the quarries were kind of put in as an afterthought, just out of curiosity. Uh, but they're just a, they're one of those fish that people need to work with. Uh, I'd love to get them going probably in the next year. They'll get the breeding size, and I'd love to get them out to people as a, uh, a care species, endangered species, fun, you know, That's aggressive, right. yeah, live bearing bass. So. Yeah, you can see this this male here. I assume is kind of asserting his dominance. Yeah. The cool thing is how how you sex the, the males and females is if you picture your hand here uh -huh. and. The males have your thumb. So if you look at their anal fin, uh, you'll see like a little thumb. Like that's a female, uh, that's a female, that's a male. Yeah, the big dude is pulling yeah. everybody around as a male. Yeah. Yeah, you just upside down glove. Gotcha. Now, where are these fish from exactly? They're Mexico also. Okay. Central West Mexico. I don't know off the top. I have the collection point. These are a really cool fish, as in, they're one of the few that. The Goodyear Working Group, mm -hmm. uh, actually, not these specific fish in specific, but in um, their their parents and great grandparents are actually collected. There's a, like an actual geotag of the pond or the river Neat. that they were pulled from. So there's there's some really good collection info. So if God forbid something did happen to that uh, that river and these fish went off the face of the earth, this is one of those genetic like uh, uh, stocks that sure. you can breed and re-release, which we've done. Yeah. So. Now, I see you've got some real big, like, male <laughs> long fin. Yeah, there's some real big long fins in there of uh, lemon blue eyes. Yeah. There's some albinos. Yeah, the, I, I, I play around with a couple bushy noses for fun, and they put off some wonky, long fin, yeah, wow. chocolate, you know, white tips, you know, really interesting ones. Yeah, those are awesome. Yeah. I, 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 nothing intentional. I have started to breed them a little bit more selectively out for fun, uh, but it, they just kind of. Uh, yeah, that's a big boy there. <laughs> that's not the biggest in the oh, picture. Oh gosh! <laughs> yeah. Awesome. What do we got here on this, this small tank? So here? this is kind of uh, this is Limea tridens. I'll grab my black one okay. here. It's the smallest of the Limeas. Limeas are from. Uh, the islands of the Caribbean. Okay. Uh, so they're technically a Limea. Uh, it, I think technically means mud. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're usually found where the, you, they can't even see, you know, an inch in front of them. Gotcha. Um, but there's a couple. Oh, yeah, there, there you go. The, nice. They get a nice orange fin with the blue and the stripes yeah. on them. There's Gorgeous. a couple. But they're full grown. They're the smallest of the Limea species. Okay. So I'm hoping to get them going. I've got like three females and two males in there. I'm hoping to. And those are like an inch and a half or so, yep. right? Yep, they're really cool. Just real small uh, wild type live bear. Very cool. Nice. What about this guy down here? That is a 40 breeder. That is, it's got, it's got some random fish in there for breeding projects, but it's really set up for the Chapel Lithius Perdalis. And uh, those are really cool fish. I got those from a guy in the club. And it's one of the few, uh, for the Gadea guys, everybody mm -hmm. in the world has heard of this fish, Chapolithius predalis, in the Gadean world, but it actually has a collection point. Um, so this is another one of those fish that if something were to happen to that waterway, this is a fish that they can come back, take, reintroduce into the wild. Uh, but the cool thing about these, and this is, you know, the males are the prettiest ones. I'll see if I can find a good male. They get gold speckling on them. Oh, yeah. Kind of see. Yeah, for sure. On them. Yep. With the yellow tail, the males get a nice yellow on yeah. the line of the tail. There's this yeah. guy down here. Yeah. yeah. They're not in full dress right now. This is kind of winter rest, technically, for mm -hmm. them. But come spring and fall, like real spring, real fall, they flare up and the gold speckling completely covers their entire sides. And that gold is awesome. Yeah. You just don't see that gold. Yeah. You know, like that, and they're you know, it, this tank is going to get redone, and uh, so I'm going to try and do them justice with the new setup. Eventually, I'd like to redo all the plants in here. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Chapolithius predalis. There's a couple 
glass barbs and, you know, of course, bushy nose. Yeah. Kind of everywhere. Right, right. But very cool. Nice. All right, we'll move on to this side of the room. Let's start up here at the top. I see you got a breeder box up here. Yeah, that's a Liberty Molly female. She's going to okay. explode. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm hoping she drops some fries. I mean, in our face. Yeah. Like, Good I'm hoping. gracious. And the males you'll see over on the other side later on. The females aren't as pretty. They still do maintain a little bit of the red dorsal fin. Yeah. And that's a huge Liberty Molly. God. Uh, Pastilia salvatori, salvatoris, I think is a scientific name of them. But yeah, I'm hoping that I get some fry. I've seen some crazy prices on them. That's insane. It's a wild type. It's not uh, It's not bred for that color. That's yeah. That's a wild type Mexican line here. Great. Good luck with that one. Yeah. Right, and then behind nice? there, it's, these are all 15 gallon tanks on the top here. Okay. Uh, that tank is kind of a catch all. Mm -hmm. There's a breeding pair of long fin lemon blue eyes in there. There's a bunch of long fin Caliatus quarries. There's some black, uh, and I forget, paradise fish, black oh, yeah. paradise fish. Mm -hmm. That's kind of just the catch all. That's that's uh, that's dwarf sash and growing in there, but it's really really the catch all. It's going to be sorted out eventually. So yeah, and those those high fins are. I, I've had great. those for years, and I've developed them to get higher and higher Jeez. and higher. I'm done with them. <laughs> so. Well, there you go, people. I mean, you want some of these high fins, get all the Josh. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Those are awesome. And then uh, this next tank here, this is uh, the Pygmy Swordtails. There's a pair of uh, lemon blue-eyed plecos in there. Okay. But those are dwarf swordtails. So you think of a swordtail. I have some over here. You'll see, you know, three, four-inch long fish. Uh, really pretty. Those guys, two inches max. Yeah. So they're really cool. Here I'll support some really good live baby Brian in there. And we'll start getting guys to come out. But these guys, have, they're slowly starting to breed for me. There is some fry mm -hmm. somewhere around there. There's also a couple uh, Zygendicus tequilas floating around in there. Somehow I think got in there. I don't know it exactly. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that's a, the males are yellow. Okay. You, you can kind of see the one male in the back. Yep, I see him. Uh, That's him right there, right? Right. Yeah. I can't see from my yeah. Oh, there he is right there. Yeah. Yeah, so they're actually yellow. The males are yellow. And they don't get a really good... There's two males there. Yeah. Um, but this but, is the yellow one. But they don't have, like, this traditional sword no, tail. No, they don't, but they're still Zephyrus. Gotcha. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. And these are also uh, kind of central Mexico. Oh yeah, a little bit, a little bit more towards the, I think the Yucatan Peninsula. Oh, okay, um, but they're wild type. You know, they're they're not bred for coloration. Yep, they're not. They're not by any means a, a genetically modified in the looking for of uh, the fish. Right, the color of the fish. All right, next door. Uh, this is Zyphophorus zyphinium. I'm sure I'm zyphinium. I'm saying these wrong. These are full grown almost. Uh, these are real small, uh, yeah. almost. They're like a platy slash sword tail. Um, they're a wild type. You just don't ever see them. They're real shy, and they get these really interesting markings. And you'll see them pop up. Uh, of course, they're being super yeah. Now shy. they're hanging away. Now head. they're being super <laughs> shy. Yeah. Let me try and get a picture. Of them. They're just. I, I don't know very many people who keep these. Um, I yeah. won these off of, like, aqua bin. They're already a shy species. Yeah, they are way back there. Well, that's the, I got the name on camera yeah. here, so people can look those up. But yeah, that's pretty neat. Yeah, you don't see them hardly ever. They're a really cool uh, live bear. They're kind of found in the same area as the okay. So that's kind of why I wanted them. Yep. So I'd like to maybe do a biotope one day. Oh, nice. With a little bit less aggressive Gadeid. Yeah, there you so. go. That. Okay. This is uh, at Nobius Taurai, and a lot of people are like, "Oh, I've seen the blue tail Gadea. I've mm -hmm. seen the blue Gadea. That was so cool. And that's that's great. I love when people get excited about Gadea, whether they're an aquarium strain or what. But this is a cool species uh, collection point because they actually have a collection point. A lot of times, you'll have the argument of. Uh, just keep the fish, keep the fish going. That's great. But 
but there's so many di uh, diversities and unique uh, uh, little tiny things with every fish out of every river mm -hmm. that if, you know, the thing with Mexico, you know, you have a lot of commercialization, industrial areas going in there and absolutely wiping out whole rivers of, of fish. And so it's incredibly important to know when it comes to these type of fish, where these fish were collected. Right. So, because there are, and I'll show you some fish here in a minute that have been reintroduced. Uh, but those are the blue good and they're not as blue because of their, they have been aquarium bred. Yep. They haven't taken the brightest male, bred them with the brightest female. Sure. Yep. And so these are what they really do look like in their, in their true, you do have a blue hue to them. Yeah. You know, but this is what they should look like. This is a true, and there's also a uh, red tail, long fin, uh, Red tail, super red plecos breeding in there. Yeah. And then there's the uh, Asbudorus that are in there. Okay. Floating around having fun. There's some, those are going away too because they're eating all my fry. <laughs> well, I can appreciate that you keep, you know, you're not afraid to keep fish like this that are, you know, not, uh, we're not talking about glow fish here. Yeah. We're not talking about yeah. uh, Betta Splenda. Yeah. We're talking about what they look like in the wild largely. Yeah. And um, keeping them just for you know the sake for the health of the fish, the species, yeah, and, and uh, no, to keep them going. I have no problem with people do that. I hope people get excited sure. about of course, like yeah, this. whatever it takes. Right? You know, maybe yeah. it gets you in your foot in the door, and you realize, you know, maybe I do want to look into keeping a a, a location specific yeah. uh, care species fish and be a genetic bank. You know, that's really what it is for me. Is I'm being a genetic bank. That's cool for a lot of these fish. Well, I think there's so many different things, you know, niches of this hobby. You can be a breeder, you can yeah. be a conservationist, you can be yeah, in the sure. biotopes, you can be in escaping. Yes. Um, commun I mean, there's just so many things you can do. So I think it's cool when somebody like yourself has a real specific kind of niche that they enjoy yeah. and really kind of see it out and run it, run it to the end. I think it's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. All That's right. Cool. Next tank here. This is uh, Lamia vitata. Yep. Uh, these are another wild type. This is the largest species of vitata. And these guys, a big female will be three inches. These guys, here's a good size male. Yeah. And these guys are becoming more popular. I've seen them pop up quite a bit on Aquabid. You'll see they get nice yellow spots. Sure. They, they are a little bit more attractive. Um, they're, uh, th this is another fish that is aquarium uh, strain bred. Uh, that people are keeping. These ones aren't necessarily uh, aquarium strain. I believe they're a little bit more on the wild side. I've seen some of them that Dance Fish has offered that are far more prettier than this. You can tell are just aquarium mm -hmm. strain, right? But that's uh, also a Volbitis in there. Uh, you, I don't know if you can tell it's a yeah, little that's, dark. That's huge. That's a 15 gallon tank, and that Volbitis goes all the oh way my back. Gosh. And you wouldn't know it, but there's 15 to 20 Sturbi quarries in there too, and they all just kind of perch. You can kind of see them. Yeah, you can see them in the plants. Just there. perched in there like little birds. That's too funny. So, oh yeah, very neat. That's just the fry tank there. That's uh, that was a drop. Of, okay, so you pull out yep. females. Yeah, so we can go over that now if you want. Sure. Yeah. So I keep five gallons and ten gallon tanks. Okay. And with Gadeids, most of them are are notorious fry eaters. Mm -hmm. They're just notorious. Fry. Um, so what I do is I have these semi heavily planted five gallons and 10 gallon tanks and, uh, I will put a pregnant female in there and they'll be in there for a week or two or three weeks. You know, the deeds typically have 60 to 90 day, uh, gestation periods. And, uh, so once they drop, I leave the female in there for a day or in that species there, actually that Xenotania resolani, those are the leopard, uh, those are huge fry eaters. Uh -huh. I have video of the female dropping a fry while chasing and trying to eat its oh fry it just ate. So wherever they're from in the wild, the rivers that they come from, crazy heavily planted, just enough for the fry. So there's like five or six little fry in there. Yeah. A good batch on them is a little more than 15. Okay. So that was a real small one. I have a feeling... I, I, but the, over here is the same things. Yep. These are all like she's gonna drop in the next day. She's gonna drop any day. There's black prince fry in there. There's Skiffy multi multipunctata fry in here. This one's empty and ready. 
This is Zujanticus tequila, fry a couple of drops in there. Yeah. But these these top ones are uh, really just you know fry catching tanks, and I let them grow up until they're far bigger than the mouth of the fish sure. that I'm gonna put them in, and then fast enough to get away. That's kind of the key. But yeah, they're they're, That's good. they're intentionally a mess. Because the filthier it is, God forbid I miss a day, but there's microfauna living in everything. Oh, for sure. There. Absolutely. And so most of these gudeans, except for the skiffia uh, species that I keep, most of them are, are pretty much uh, uh, carnivores. Like uh, they like a lot of protein in their diet. Mm -hmm. uh, so if they're eating little coke pods or whatever, yeah, that's if I if I miss a brine shrimp eating uh, feeding. And that's good for me. Yeah, so, man. You keep in ecosystems, right? Yeah, pretty much. That's yeah. what I do. You know, it's great. That's what I do. Uh, let's head back down on this rail again. What's on this? You need to sit. <laughs> this here, these are some of the sword tails that I keep. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Those are really small fry. There's some really big ones in there. Of course, they're going to be super shy right now. Uh, there's also Florida flagfish in there. Uh, that's, those are awesome. Here, I'm going to put some light in here. Oh, there's also a CW 97s in there for you kids. Mm. See if we can come out. And what what are these fish again? You said? Uh, really, this tank is set up for the Florida flag fish. Okay. But there are random quarries and, of course, bushy nose plecos, yep. as you can see. And uh, this has also been a plant catch. I've had a couple too many uh, large and dubious plants. So until the, the most of the plants in here are going to go into either the 40 or the 50 that you'll see. What are these orange fish here? These are just swordtail fry. They should oh, okay. pop up. Not gotcha. just swordtail fry. Nice. Okay, I'll put my hand in Blackfish are just. Oh, there we go. I see him now. Kind of off to the left here. Yeah. There's a good look at him. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing about having. There's one flagfish. Yeah. That's just, honestly, I've never seen one that small, so they must be breeding because I all the ones I put in there were five times bigger than that. Great. Right. There's some big ones in here. You must know it. There's some big ones in here. <laughs> We'll take over for it. Yeah, that's one thing with with uh, planting tanks like this. You, in, these are twenty longs, okay. but turned on their sides. Yeah. So if this was set up like a normal twenty long, sure. there'd be no problem. Sure. Seeing. But I'm really yeah. just worried about breeding them. Yep. So yeah, no, these are not displays. No, right? these are no. And, and I do try to maintain a little bit of a display factor with live plants and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know. I've been experimenting more with live plants. Like I've gotten some anubias, not not anubias, uh, cryptogreens and uh, hydrophilias and uh, a couple other things. But I'm trying to see how they do in my tank. And so far, some are doing yeah. good. Some are doing for sure. This tank here, this is probably one of the two rare fish in this in this room. This okay. is a gudea that is native to the United States, and it's Corinthi. Uh, Bailey, I'll have, I'm butchering that name, but it's it's actually a uh, egg layer egg laying pupfish. Mm. Um, it's one of the only pupfish you can own in the United States. Um, any other form of it uh, is illegal. <laughs> so I promise you, this is Moape, white one. Uh, it is 100% legal. It is critically, critically, critically endangered. And these are small uh, fry. They were half this size when I got them. And uh, there's six of them in there. My friend, he's been had really good luck with breeding them in uh, Illinois. Mm -hmm. uh, is he? I think he's in Illinois or Wisconsin. I think he's in Illinois. I won't say his name. But uh, they're just a really rare, really awesome fish. The males, they're just starting to six out. They don't have a ton of colors. There's a male. You can see he's got a little bit yellow to him. There's a bigger male floating around here. But... 
They're cool. And that's another, there's some Anubias, and that's my one of my hydro, hydrophilias or hydrophilias. Mm -hmm. And there's some narrow leaf java fern and Anubias in there and whatnot. Of course, there's some rain bushes. Yep, always. Okay. So here's the black prince. Right? Yeah, these are black princes. Uh, males have the black fins yep. and bright, shiny silver sides. They're awesome. She just gave birth up there, so she's a little skinny. Uh, but there's three males and four females. Oh, and there's a pygmy sun, a pygmy sun fish in there. I didn't know that. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, but that's a 20 long setup solely for them. Uh, I'm really, really, I've tried. I've spent way more money than I want to admit <laughs> trying to get these fish going. And uh, I finally have them going. I finally have fry from them. Uh, it's one of those fish that people, you know, black prints, it's obviously people have, uh, you know, a watch for them. Mm -hmm. you know, there's like a, a royalty to them. Yeah. And where are these from in the world? These are Gadeids. Okay. So they're from, you know, western, central Mexico. Yep. That's where all the Gadeids are from pretty much is western, central Mexico. Gotcha. Um, but these are one of my favorite things. Very neat. Okay. Sorry. That's all right. That's a breeding colony of Crackdown Letter Elves. Mm. Uh, those are another type of Gadeid. Uh, the males, which I have... That's a nice female. The males are a little shyer in this tank. I could probably throw some of them. I have some extra males over. Oh, there's a male. They have a little bit of redder oh, fans. Yeah. You see them flash yeah. red. Let me grab. See, this is one of those things. Okay. Oh, it's a working fish room, right? Where'd I know. I, where did I put that thing? Where did I put my eyedropper? <laughs> They've been waiting all day for this. No, you'll see them. So there's a good meal. Oh, there's a couple good meals. They get oh, yeah. the nice red on the sides. Yep. They're, you know, they're also referred to as like the rainbow Gadeid because okay. of that. They'll get nice greens in there. They'll get really bright reds, a little purple going on them. These guys are almost full grown. Uh, this this colony I'm kind of excited about because they are just starting to like not eat their fries. Like there's a little dude there, mm -hmm. so they're. The males are leaving everybody alone. There's enough plant cover in there for them. That's a, that's another one of those endangered good hits. That's a cool. There's one of your knife light bears. Oh that's yeah, the last one. The Caltratus. Yeah, great. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's a good size male. Yeah. All right. That next one you can dunk. That's key fish. Some rainbows. <laughs> what's this? What's this that's lady another, here? That's another. That's uh, another female, uh, Liberty Molly. Oh, okay. Yep. Hoping that she drops pretty She's soon. She's getting ready, yep. She's getting ready. Good size. All right, bottom row. Here, if you need to put it, I'm good. I'm good. Okay, What's so this guy? feel free to use the light if okay. you want. I don't want to. It looks like it's doing pretty good. So that's the true Xenotoka Aizenai. Okay, so there's four or well, one, two, Three, four, five. So there's five in the Xenotoka complex mm -hmm. of Gadeids. It's a central, western Mexico Gadeid. And uh, Xenotoka, and I hear there's rumors that they're going to break them all up and put them in their own. But uh, for a long time, for years and years and years, they were all called, all these Xenotoka fish were called Xenotoka eyes. But as we've studied them more and done more you know, tests on the fish, mm -hmm. sequencing, I'm sure, uh, we have realized that they're all, there's many, many, many individually distinct species. But the males get um, yellow tails yep. with a little blue, mm -hmm. a little green, but that's eyes and eye gets that. That's the only one. And their bodies and shapes a little different too. You'll notice that too, that their body shapes just a little bit different when you see the other one. Is that uh, Anubius in there? Yep, there's a giant it's Anubius. Beautiful in there. Anubius. Yeah, I, I love it. I love, I love all those type of plants. Okay. Let's see if I can get them to come out. There was a recent, oh yeah, they're coming out. So this is Xenotoka, yep. Melanosome. And uh, these guys are called the Black Gadeid. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and there's, there's eight or nine of them in there, and they're crazy shot. Recently on some of the online forums, there's been a lot of people noticing that the Zena token mill is somewhat in, in the... Okay, whenever you're ready. So those are the other collection points of the Scipio Multiplicata I was talking about. Mm -hmm. So these are the ones that get the big black spots on them. Yeah. If you see if you can get a male that wants to stop for a second. <laughs> there we go. See how big his black spot is yep. on his side? Sure do. So those guys, well, actually the black spot will get bigger. And that's not a, like read something in the aquarium. That's just, you know, evolutionary mm -hmm. uh, that happened in the wild. They just get far larger black spots. This is newer to the to the fishroom. I've got fry up here going, uh, but there's a you know some dwarf satch in there. And there's also some bushy you nose know, floating around in there. You know, the cool thing about all of these Gideons is you don't have to heat the tanks. <laughs> sure, at all. yeah. And uh, this you know this is probably this lower rack is probably in the you know, 68 degrees right now. Okay. The top rack's probably 72, 73. Uh, but in the summertime, I actually try to cool it down to here because they're a cool water fish. Mm -hmm. You know, we get above 74, except for the Towerai and a couple other species, they will start dying off. Gotcha. So the, the cool thing about these fish is they're ideal for Ohio. They're you know, cold in the wintertime. You have air conditioned house, they're going to be fine. There's Coriolis Pate in there also. I know my tank's dirty, the glass is dirty. It's all right. That's no, okay. Yeah, that's another one. Yeah. Big black spots. Nice. Uh, this is Aladon Tickbees, Tamazula. So there's actually a couple species in here. This is the fry. The little dudes are the fry of the Xenotania Rizlane, which we looked okay. at earlier up top. Okay, yep. So they're just in here to grow out. This was two really good drops for me. So you see the little guy. This tank is really set up for these guys. Mm -hmm. These are another form of Gideon, and they're considered to be kind of like a, a goby live bearer, uh, but they're more like you know water puppies for me. They're at the surface begging for food all the time, but they're 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 known to be bottoms. Like they get nice males get nice little red color on them. Um, but there's four. Okay, we're back. Um, so we're on the Skiffias. Yeah. So we saw some of those. We saw the black yeah. dots. Okay. Then we're on these guys. Eladon took these Tamazula. Yep. And uh, these guys are just one of those ones that you never see. It's a Gadiet also. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I've only ever seen a couple people have them available. And a friend of mine just so happened to have some fry and was more than gracious to send them my way. So I got two pair in there. And the, the fry that are in here are not theirs, unfortunately. Those are of the Xenotania Rizlane. Okay. I just need to grow out for them. Sure. So that's why, why they're in there. Um, but you'll see these guys tend to be, well, from everything I've read online, they're supposed to be bottom-dwelling Gadeids. Mm -hmm. They don't really do that for me, unfortunately. Uh, so I, that's why I kind of had it set up with more bricks for them, with little places to go in and out yeah. of and whatnot. And that's a big bulbitis, probably. That's a 20 yeah, high. So that bulbitis is about near basketball size. Dang, man. You know, there's awesome. a couple of them around here. Sorry, I'm going to screw out of your way. Yep. And then this is Xenotania Rosalani, the, the leopard Gideon. Uh, far, far more aggressive of the, some of the Gideons. Um, those are mostly males in there. I have like three or four good sized females, two of them are in holding. But the dominant male, you can see, gets white tips yeah. on there. And they really are, like, again, I, I use uh, shop lights. Mm -hmm. I don't use any type of aquarium light. If I had real good full-spectrum lighting, there are colors that I miss on these fish. You know, there's there's a lot of different yellows and, and you know, different hues on these fish sure. that, I, that I miss. But that's also another big bulbitis back there. Yeah. That's gorgeous. Giant. Tank Hard to find. It's good. Awesome. Sorry. Okay, so let's get this kind of middle row here. You want to do it that one? Oh yeah, right. Yeah, we got this twenty-six uh, boat front, right? Yeah, it's twenty-six gallon boat front. Nice. That's a really cool tank. Uh, Frank Keith found it outside of the road, and there's no filtration there other than 
Uh, it's an air still, it looks like. Yeah, 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 but there's no filter other than the plants. In yeah, there. yeah. So that's Giffia francesi. Uh, that's probably one of the two, uh, you know, victories in the Gideon world. Mm -hmm. uh, they were pretty much extinct in the wild and due to scientists and hobbyists and a couple of zoological institutions in Europe actually collected and bred, uh, bred what was in captivity and took a fish that was pretty much extinct in the wild and reintroduced it back into the wild. Uh, so that fish is it's really cool. You know, I have two uh, two tanks of them, just in case, God forbid, one crashes. But yeah. Skiffia, like the other ones, that have black spots. And this one gets no spots. So the males get yellow gold. Females are, you know, dull in color. Mm -hmm. There's a black prince trio in there too, as my backup colony. Um, oh yeah, I see him. You see him yep. swimming around. There. There's two females in there also. Uh, but that was also, you know, I probably should be experimenting on that rare of a species, but I wanted to see what, you know, a uh, pothos plant, a couple of and stuff did. It, you know, that tank's been set up for a while and I've never yeah. had any, any issues. we got a bunch of hair algae here love it. and it. duckweed yep. and, right? It's yep. all good, man. I love it. I love it. It's all part of it. It's yep. awesome. I love it. Love that. Okay, let's move over here. And what, tell me what these guys are. These are, so this is the backup colony of the Scythia princess. Oh, okay. Yep. And Xiphophorus evelyn. This is the Pueblo oh, plat right here. Yeah. yeah, you'll see a couple of them. Yeah. They're not a super pretty fish. They're just a wild type live bear. There's it's probably a dozen cool spots. Yep. Leopard like print on Yep. You'll see some big long fin. Oh, yeah. Bushy nose there. But that's, this whole tank is one bullbite plant. <laughs> that's just one long wow. growing bullbite plant. When, what size tank is this? Josh? This is a 15, I forget the name of it, but it's not an extra high, but it's 15 gallon. Yeah, wow. So, that you can tell when we'll buy this place to do good. They get this dark, mm -hmm. dark hue to them. Sorry if my light's bothering me. I mean, you're bringing Bobitis as well as you are anything, brother. I know. Like, like I screamed out. gracious. Okay. This tank's got a bunch of fun stuff in it. Yeah, this is this is the grow outs for the Iliadon Versidens. And uh, these aren't great Greg Sage's line. These are a more wild type line from mm -hmm. another friend of mine. Um, oh, look at this one right back here. The yeah. Tail. Yep. Nice. Yep, they get, and they're still beautiful fish. You know, that's another fish that a lot of people are just, you know, Corey from Aquarium Co op has been keeping the Diaz recently. And uh, this is one of them everybody's wanting. Everybody on the internet wants these fish because Corey's been keeping, which is great. He's got great sages line. I think everybody should show an interest in the care species fish. So hopefully through him, you know, showing people about these fish, you know, more people get interested in such a rarity. Yep. Uh, but there's also in this tank, it's my catch-all of my extra male black princes and my extra male uh, lateralises. So you'll see like couple extra meal. There's a meal ladder house. There's like oh, yeah. five or six of them in there. Okay. Somewhere I just saw like four. There's another Black Prince meal. Extra meals. And then there's uh, Red Panda Barbs, which I like to breed. I pick a couple of Barbs a year. And yeah, cool. One. So, actual Red Panda Barbs in there. Now these Black Princes, what are, tell us again, what, what, is that a... Uh, good deal. A, a, okay, another good deal. Yeah, okay, gotcha. another good deal. Gotcha. Yep. And, you know, the thing with the Black Prince is they're rare to begin with in the water. Mm -hmm. They're rare to begin with in captivity. And they've been bred so much by, you know, line breeding. A fish that only on a good, in a good, if you've got a good line of these fish, you might get five to ten. Really good fry on them. But because they've been so line bred, they've been, uh, you know, everybody in their mom wants them you have black princes that they don't can't take care of the fish like they should. So now you have these uh, fish that maybe give you four, five on a really good spawn, mm -hmm. maybe ten on an amazing, an amazing drop. Mm -hmm. um, so they're becoming more and more hard to find. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, those are neat. I don't see those. Yeah, I, I love them. And they're almost full grown. Those aren't like babies. Those are almost. You got a little uh, DIY brine shrimp yeah, hatchery that's my, going. That's my little brine shrimp. I've had those same, those same uh, water bottles for. A while. Awesome. <laughs> hey, whatever works, brother. <laughs> I can't whatever keep it works. 
can you awesome. play? You start on the top? Yep, we'll start at the top here. So that's a 30 breeder. Right. And uh, there's it really that tank is set up for the Propelia Compressa, mm -hmm. which is these guys here. Yep. They're a blue, blue eyed live bird. So you hear blue eye, and a lot of people think of uh, rainbow fish. Like, uh, what's the ones you keep? Suda McGill. Suda yeah. McGill's, and there's a couple Signifers, other ones, Signifers. Yeah. But now these are the live bear kind of versions of it. Uh, they're really cool, bright yellow, bright blue eyes. Uh, I've got seven or eight of them right, off of Aquabee. Yeah, you yeah, can and, see that blue eye coming through yeah, this guy. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and there's a random Variata in there. Sure, yeah, what the hell, you know? know why not? <laughs> I've been trying to catch him, but he's smart. <laughs> but that's one of my first forays into hygrophilia, and it's turning terrestrial. Jeez, yes. It's turning wow, terrestrial because it's such a short tank. That's fun. Yeah, so I don't know. I'd be curious to know how it turns out in yeah, a couple more cool. months. But I do keep shorter tanks. I try it, you know, just for space wise. Sure. And yeah. But eventually, that tank should hopefully be full of them. Some this is a big Anubias back here. Yeah, there's a couple of Anubias, yes, yes. and there's a Bulbitis in there as always. So and there's a going. there's a, a, a softball size of Java fern in there. Oh yeah, that kind of stuff. And awesome. you know, you'll see hair algae in some of these things, but I don't care. Right. No, it's all good, man. Like I said, it's part of the ecosystem. Yeah, for sure. It's not hurting anything. All right, here's the humpbacks. Yeah, look at him first before he runs inside. Oh, wow, yeah. That's one of my main breeding male, long fin lemon blue eyes. Gorgeous. Yeah, I love him. But this is a humpback lamia. This is a really cool, really true, you know, from what I've seen, um, of the more wild type strains. You'll see some that get a super elongated, they've been bred, they have a real long top fin mm -hmm. and uh, you tend to lose the hump in the males so like the females are more torpedo shape oh i see yeah and you'll see them like, these are mostly up here's a really good male. this male right here he's a pretty good male. he actually has a hump on his back yep. and you can see this guy starting to develop it mm -hmm. she's going to drop fry any day now oh wow, yeah so but the males you know they spar and they get a really nice pretty hump on mm -hmm. their back and a cool story, I don't have them in here. I would like to find a true collection of them, but there's another species of Vimea that looks like this that's found with these guys, um, but the males don't get the humpback, and they're actually the tiger Vimea. Oh, okay. And uh, I think they're, I could be wrong, I'm okay with being wrong, I think they're extinct in the wild and only a couple people keep them. Hmm. Um, but I'd love to find them because it's one of those fish that, was collected and caught and sold and as humpbacks, but it turned out just because they looked familiar, similar, not familiar, they were uh, they were overlooked. So gotcha. somebody sat there and went, "You know what? That male isn't getting a humpback. Looks different. Looks yeah. a little bit just <laughs> a little bit different." So uh, of course we got huge Anubias, huge Lobitis. There's some really cool Anubias. That. There's some like penny ones. Oh yeah, growing in the back, in the back. Yeah. and this is like yeah. flame moss in the front. There you go. You'll see yeah. a little fry of the blue eyed uh, bushy nose floating around in there. Awesome. But yeah, lots That's of right. plants, lots of different all the things. All right, this is a twenty long. Um, this is set up for the Xiphophorus nisicoil, which is one of the northernmost swordfish sword tails. And uh, they don't get very big. They're all full grown in here. Uh, you also will see Gambusia holobrookii, which my friend Chris Neal collected for me in, in Florida and shipped them to me. Uh, it's just another, it's an eastern uh, mosquito fish. Awesome. So they're just a really cool, it's a pretty much a full grown male of the mosquito fish in there. Wow. A couple females. They don't get super big. So we're back on these sore tails. You can see the male, he's really sparring the female. Oh, yeah. And they'll actually get a little bit of a saber effect on the male's wheel when they get really sexually mature. Yep. The tail will start to curve kind of up. These don't have a collection point, unfortunately. Uh, there's been a couple of uh, lines that have a uh, collection point. But these really aren't an endangered, endangered fish. These are just a wild type, you know, sword tail um, that I enjoy. I, just, yeah. I really, I don't know many people who have them. There's a couple... You know, there's a uh, Crypt Spiralis in there. Yep. I've been trying. That's another 
plant that I've been trying. Is that a half beak you got in there? Yes, there's a random female half beak <laughs> that got the absolute snot beat out of her. I see that. And uh, I've been trying to mend her in there. And I don't have the male is over with the Alphorus robustus. Okay. And and he he in specific tore her up. Man. Just tore her up, left every fish alone in the tank but her. So she's Poor on girl. the mend. But she looked a lot worse than that, I'll tell you that. There's also panda cories in the bottom. Yep. And cool thing about this tank, uh, the panda cories and there's snowball plecos in here. Uh, snowball plecos are obviously probably going to be harder to find because they're hiding. But I bought, I started off, you know, so snowball plecos aren't an expensive fish, but they're more you know, pricier sure. pleco. I started off with 12. I had them for two years. Pulled them out. I only had six left. Oh, man. I uh, have recently been seeing very small snowball plecos floating around. Okay. So they're they're slowly, you can kind of see them in that little hotel. If you go over here and look, look back that way. Oh, yeah. I see them now. So yeah. I'm back up to like 13. I counted recently. They're, they're slowly coming back. And Love the, it. And the panda quarries, I started off with six. And they're, you wouldn't know it, but there's probably 25 or 30 in there. That's fun. They That's just, the best breeding. That's lazy breeding. It's the best. Set it up. Let the fish figure it I out. It. Next yeah. thing you know, you're just making fish. I, I love it. You know, occasionally a friend will come over and like, oh, I haven't seen really good panda cores in a long time. I'll go in there and pull five or six uh, out. You can't find, I mean, good, healthy panda cores are becoming pretty rare. They so. are. So, yeah. So good for you. You'll see awesome. them slowly come out. Yeah. This is a 10-gallon. This is, I'm going to butcher the name, Bracky Hapsis or Hapsis. Rose and I. Okay, that's pretty good. Costa Rican. Nice. Uh, smaller live bear, but I, I, so these are still almost full grown, maybe a little bit bigger. Everything online says they're, they're evil, that they're just pure evil. <laughs> and uh, I haven't experienced that yet. I have plans to give them the bigger tank than this 10 gallon. Um, I do feed them pretty heavily with live foods. Uh, so I think that might be one reason why. But they have just a really cool Oh, yeah, the dorsal is red and, and the, the red. The males, looks like. And they get the, the lines on them. They're just a really, really, really and cool. The male fin's kind of black yep. extended down. That's yep. pretty neat. Yep. So I haven't experienced their evil nature yeah. yet. But um, I, I would like to give them a 20 long pretty soon once my buddy comes and picks up these fish. That's so. a neat little fish. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah that's you a got what, these vinegar eels here? Yeah, vinegar eel culture. I haven't refreshed you a long time but usually at the top and in the middle you'll see him floating around yeah when i do the barbs i usually use okay that. that's like my start fry for when nice. i when i see him yeah all right we'll head back on this row so this is a 10 gallon and this is the smallest vertebrae in the americas this is heterandria formosa this is a live Whoa. bear and this is a full-grown female jeez that's a full-grown the smaller ones are full-grown males these are full-grown males floating around there and that's a live bear you know that's the trend in, in what i like to keep yep. and uh really cool thing is these are collected from a friend in another club here at youngstown these are from georgia these are from southern georgia in some his son's backyard like swamp wow. he collected them and sent them over to me and they just got nuts so there's a cool fish native to the america north america and uh they do this the females do this really cool thing where they'll give birth to like one or two females, but they just dive bomb. They'll go along the bottom of the tank and drop one little tiny fry. And so I love to see if I, a fry, they're probably back in that bulbitis hiding. Um, but I mean, yeah, you can see the males. Yeah. They're so small. You can see their gonopodium, yeah. but almost the whole size of their Crazy. body. Crazy. Yeah. I know this is not picking us up on camera, but this, these things are really intricate man yeah and you know the cool thing is that's a 10 gallon there might be 30 of them in there who knows god yeah and that's all you know it's a calling sweet fish all right next to those guys yeah so this is right now there's a couple quarries in here and there's liberty mollies which you'll oh, see, I see yeah that's a good male the liberty yeah. molly there's a random sure meta Friend. which you know so if you want to come get it but the real the real star in my opinion is or cracked on Audax Los yep. Pinos, which is this little dude right here, who's you know, of course, sparring off. Yep. Um, but there's a pair of those in there. Those I only know like three people, maybe four, in the United States that have this collection of Cadid, and uh, I've tried to breed them for a year now, <laughs> never gotten a single fry oh, off there of he them. Is. 
Yeah. And uh, a couple of my friends are telling me they're too old. That's a full grown. Okay. So there's a chance that they have just lost interest in reading. So I put those Liberty Mollies in there with them being mm-hmm. such prolific breeders. Yeah. I have done this before with other quarries. Where if I put, if I look, if I wanted gold lasers or something to breed that I was having a hard time with, I would put bronze quarries in there because they're easy to breed and they breed all the time. The hormones and pheromones mm-hmm. that the easier to breed fish uh, put out into the water yep. would trigger the harder to breed fish to breed sometimes. Interesting. So my hope is with these Liberty Mollies being in there and breeding all the time that they will trigger on Audex Los Pinos collection. Uh, How many do you have in there? The Los Pinos. Just two. Male, one, one male, one female. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just two. I've ha- I've babied them for close to two years. That's the female right there. She just came out. That's yeah. the female. So I'm hoping that. Yeah, man, we'll stick to it, buddy. I know. I'm hoping. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> this is a hodgepodge tank. This is all my breeding. Uh, like things like okay. uh, so. It, I'm sorry if the light's bothering it. That's good. There's yeah, there celestial go. pearl danios that I've read. Oh yeah, I see. Them. There's dwarf kamaka rainbow fry in there. There's glass bark fry. Yep. Uh, and then there's orange Venezuelan quarry uh, in there also. So mm-hmm. that's kind of like my my last couple breeding projects yep. in my five gallon tank that I've done. Hanging out in there. CPD. That's a Highly sought after fish. And they're so easy. I love them. Yeah, <laughs> I breed yeah. them in a in a one gallon, uh, like almost milk jug. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, they're so easy to breed. They're That's just really fun. I don't know. Yeah. The light. Sometimes if it's on the top and it's pointed down, yeah, that that's a little bit better sometimes. But you yeah. can see the Kamaka Rainbow Fry. The smallest ones are the Kamaka Rainbow Yeah, Rainbow. okay, I see those. There's about a half dozen of those left in there. Nice. CPDs. What is this tank? Holy cow. That's a 33 long. Is that four feet? Yep, four foot long tank. Jeez. And it's only like 18 or 16 inches tall in the same front to back. And this is a Mika Splendens. Uh, this is, you know, one of the few, you know, Amica Splendens. A lot of Amica Splendens are all aquarium strains. It's a good deal. Okay. Okay. Uh, but this is a really cool story behind these, which is why I keep them. So back before, you know, the ethical nature of zoological institutions, mm-hmm. aquariums would do expeditions and zoos would do expeditions and go out and collect fish or animals. Like they go out and collect elephants, they go out and collect gorillas, whatever. Yeah. This is from the early 50s or 60s Cleveland Aquarium. They went out in an expedition and collected the original parents of these fish wow. from there. And then when it closed down, a couple of gentlemen who were part of the Cleveland Aquarium Society were gifted them and maintained them, and then they gave me some. So these are these are from the old Cleveland Aquarium, from the genes of the old Cleveland Aquarium. So that's why awesome. I really. But they're uh, they are endangered. They're very much Mika Splendens are very much endangered. And like uh, the Chapolithius Perdalis had a gold flake on them. Yep. These get silver. Oh, I see. Yeah. So the males get look at that. Get, wow. Get silver. There's a nice, male. A couple of nice yep. males right there. Uh, but these these colony spawn. Uh, there's also Gambusia affinis, which is the western mosquito fish. I could have done it wrong. I apologize if I did eastern, western. Yeah. But I actually collected these in the in the, in the Lake Erie. Oh, neat. The, the mosquito fish in Lake Erie. So there's like uh, probably seven or eight pairs in there floating around somewhere. And they drop fry and whatnot. <laughs> but the uh, cool thing about this tank is um, you'll see, you know, for these fish being voracious eaters, the amount of food I drop in here every day is incredible. But you'll still see uh, baby bushy nose pleco, you'll still see baby mm-hmm. fry, and then you'll also see cherry shrimp in the bulbitis place oh, yeah. all over the place. Yeah, they oh, leave one. all the cherry shrimp on. Yeah, wow. One right there. Yeah, they're kind of all over the place, and sometimes in the nooks and crannies and whatnot. That's a bulbitis in there too, and it's going. It goes terrestrial. It'll actually grow above the water occasionally. And, uh, yeah. 
this pop up. Woo. And there's also the electric blue prey fish in there. Yeah, I see him sticking out there. He leaves everybody alone. That's he crazy. Hangs out in his little in his little area there yeah. and lives his best life. Nice. Eats the whatever goes down. Yeah. <laughs> Scavenges it up. <laughs> Omnivore for sure. Yes, hundred percent. So that's another uh, those are the fry and Zenitoka Melsoma. Okay. So that's a grow on tank. Yep. Great. That's and what size tanks are these, Josh? 20 high. 20, 20 highs. All the, oh, except for the bow frets, all the bottoms are 20 high. Okay. Um, that next tank is the Xenotoka Melnosoma. That's another black. Uh, the back of the come out. It's a really shy. You need it. Oh, yeah, there you go. That'll do it. They just, as soon as I like them, of course they're big. <laughs> the big ones are the females, the small ones are the males. Okay. Um, but they're just really rare. They have a collection point, which is really cool. You know, it's a gene bank. I, had, I heard a lot of people say they have really bad luck with Xenotokia melasomas. I have. All right. Xenotokia melasonoma. Yep. They're those. the black that he is. Yep. Yep. Gorgeous. All right. Is that Phosphorus Captivus? Xenophorus. Oh, Xenophorus. Captivus. Wow. Yeah, these are really rare to see. They're uh, kind of like, they're uh, they're not full grown yet, but they're not. Pretty soon I think they'll probably start breeding for me. They're super chill. Um, yeah. Just one of those fish that's a good deal that you never see. I, I do have a collection of point on them. This is my first time working with them. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're probably three months old if the fish are in here. Okay. I don't have a ton of – everything online with, with a lot of good years, except for the ones who have been worked with for a long time, don't have a lot of information. Mm -hmm. So this is one of those ones there's not a ton of information, except for what's on the good year working group website. So, great. All right. This is the – you know, when everybody hears uh, – you know, Gadea, they think of either this or the Iliadon person is right now. This is Eugenicus tequila. Uh, this is another, just like the Scythia Francese. Mm -hmm. Everybody took what they had, bred them, and re released them into the wild. And they're right now, they just did it this past year uh, on the Day of the Dead mm -hmm. uh, in Mexico. And uh, they, they released, I think, 3,000, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. Of these guys back into the wild. The males are really cool. Is that yep, with the orange, yep. they get the orange. Yep. Um, the tail. They're not in breeding dress because it's the cooling period of the of the year. Um, but yeah, the, they'll get bright. The, uh, yeah. I hate to say it like this. The males will get bright black. Huh. That, that makes sense. Yeah. They'll get shiny black with that orange tail. And these guys have actually started colony spawning for me. You'll see occasionally little fry. Mm -hmm swimming around in there, but I do pull the females just because they're such a rare fish. Sure, yeah. Um, I do want to have as much of an output as possible. Yeah, there's some there's some babies in there for sure. Yeah. Okay. That's Xenotoka doadrioi. This is another one that a lot of people are looking for. I know Corey from Aquarium Co-op has been working with these guys, and uh, these guys call on these one. They dropped last night. You can see all those little tiny fry yep. in there. Yep. They weren't there yesterday. <laughs> oh, wow. Awesome. Congrats, man. Yeah. Those are good size fry, too. Yeah. That's, you know, there was probably a good 30 or so fry drop last night. They're very prolific. Nails are really cool. Um, they will see. Got that, like, red peduncle. and. Yep. So they get the. Yeah. Let's see if we can get a good meal. Here. I'll open the window. Do this. Get the baby Brian. This will make them come out. So you'll see the males will have like an orange. Yep. Oh yeah, it comes out nice. That's you know one of the many. A lot of people thought that was Xenotoka eyes and eye, but after a long time of studying, that fish, if you were to pull a male and a female out and compare them to the true Xenotoka eyes and eye, two different leaves, two different fish. Hmm. They just don't look. They look close. They just look different. Yeah. Two different fish. There's needle leaf java fern in there. Oh yeah. Which I've been reading. Gorgeous. 
love it to death. And there's a big old bite in there too. Of course. Okay. Here's a little bow front here. So yeah, it's a 36 bow front. That's Xenotoka lion's eye. Okay. Uh, that's the largest of the Xenotoka species. Mm -hmm. The males get only yellow and blue on their mm -hmm. tails. So it's hard, no terrible lighting, but you can see the males will be yellow, yep. orange color with the blue, whereas the Wadroi get green and a couple black and a couple other colors. So those are, that's the other, you don't see lion's eye, that's the Xenotoka lion's eye. You don't see lion's eye uh, with a collection point too often anymore in, in the Aquariums in the United States. There's a couple guys I know in uh, Illinois, Wisconsin that they have. I'm probably one of like maybe four or five people this side of the United States that have a collection point. Well, we are lucky to see them. Those are awesome looking fish, man. Yeah, and they, those guys, believe it or not, eat their fry. Okay. So, you know, with them being so close related to Duadruoi mm -hmm. and and I, you wouldn't think that they would eat their fry. Those guys, I have to pull the females. Gotcha. They eat their fry. Wow. What about this guy here? Yeah, there's just a pair of Chapolithius and Costas. And I haven't had too much luck with them in breeding. I've had them for about six months. It's a male and female pair. And uh, they're in there for holding right now for winter mm -hmm. uh, rests. So when you hear me say winter rests, Indians do better when they have the fluctuation okay. of, the, of the year. So they go from... Not necessarily warm water in the summertime, but you know, upper seven, low seventies, middle seventies. Yeah. And then the resting period of the winter time, which is the middle to low sixties, which is kind of where we're at right now. Yep. Um, they live longer, they're healthier, and you don't have as many issues with them if you do that. So this is true, you know, in my fish room with the Gideons, it's winter rest, right? That guy's just chasing that female, yep, ring sure. around the sponge filter. He's doing everything right. <laughs> he is. I give him all the props. Uh, Still great. no fry. Yeah. So. All right, keep at it, buddy. Still no fry. All right, then we got one more tank here. <laughs> Over on the dark side. Right? As we walk in, look at this crinum in this thing. <laughs> Crinum's another. So I, I start, pardon the crinum that's floating. So you can see. I had this in with the Amica Splendens tank, mm -hmm. the 33 long, and there's still some black beard algae on it. You can see with this crinum here, yeah, all wow. the black beard algae. This looked like that one, unreal. Two days ago, and the you know the Amicas eat black beard algae. Crazy. So, cool thing with these crinums, I started off with two, and I've got like five or six in that yep. pot, four or five floating here. I don't know what. What's up? But I, I just have another knack with, with, you know. Yeah, that's another plant. You just don't see that often. No, you don't. And they just split and split and split yeah. and split. I mean, it's only two years. Two Sweet. years they've been doing it. And but where are these fish in here? So these are the jeweled split fins, the oh, okay. Yep. Uh, Xenotoka variata. Um, males, you can see, get bright speckles. Yep. Like a jeweling on them. Females aren't that pretty. There's another good male. You can see his colorations oh, on the yeah. side. Yep. Yellow. Uh, this tank's going to get redone. I want to emphasize the jeweled split fins and the crinums, but I need to get I need to get some more. I want to find some more rocks. I don't have a lot of tanks with a lot of rocks, and I kind of want to find some really interesting rocks to put in there to work with everything. Well, you come on, really my yard, y'all. You can pick up rocks all you want. I know, right? yard, buddy. Come on. The males are beautiful. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah, you're starting to see those more and more in the hobby because they're so pretty. Yeah. You'll see those occasionally pop up at club auctions and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Fantastic. All right, thanks, Josh, so much for taking us through the room. As you guys can see, some incredible, rare good deeds, mainly in this in this room. Also, huge bulbitis, <laughs> some large anubias, large crinum. Uh, so you're doing, obviously, a lot of right things here in this room. Um, Tell us, do you do you sell fish? Is it? Uh, I mean, if if people see something today, maybe they like, can they get in touch with you? A lot of my fish I don't necessarily sell because of the rarity of them. Sure. So if you're really truly interested in wanting to keep a care species and you want to set up a tank and become a part of that community of people who take care of care species, like at home conservationists, I don't have a problem sharing. Uh, so right. you know, I, there are, I, if I have extras, I give. I, there's 
become part of the community of library keepers, uh, there's a couple forums on Facebook. We give each other fish. I'm not here, none of these fish I'm really making money off of at all. Uh, I'm just like, this is a rare and endangered species fish listed on the IU, ICUA, you know, like the zoos, we see different animals at zoos. But uh, these fish are listed on those lists. And uh, I just want to get them out to people. So if I have extra, I share. Awesome. I, I really do. I don't ever look for anything. So if you're interested and I have the fish, I'll tell you, I'd love to give you that fish, but I don't right. have enough to give you. Yeah. So. so if people are interested, they, they see something they've been trying to find, they're into, you know, keeping endangered good yeah. What's the best way for people to get a hold of Facebook? Okay. Yeah, Joshua so we'll, Cook right. on Facebook. Perfect. And we'll link that. We'll link that yeah. in this video. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, I really appreciate you taking no us through. This has been a long time coming. Um, I, We've like tried I, a lot. I know. <laughs> well, I was like, I was telling Josh, this is a hidden treasure and it's, people need to see this. It's like almost, it's after 10. It's past both our bedtimes, yeah. I just say that. Yeah, my wife wakes up at 3 o'clock in the <laughs> okay, morning. Okay, well, we'll <laughs> no, she's three. Two well, okay, good, good. We'll keep it quiet. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, obviously, if you're into this video, you love these rare goodyids and these care species. Um, so be sure you follow Josh, find him over on Facebook. Um, go ahead and give this video a like and share yeah. this out and subscribe. Sure. And um, yeah, thanks for tuning in here to Biotopes. Another uh, another cool video. Hopefully you guys like it. And our my first fish room tour, other than my own. Yeah. So hopefully many more. Hopefully many more. Yeah. Many thanks more. so much, Josh. Appreciate no it. Hi, right, buddy.